everyone this is dr kazi and in this video we are going to learn about the osteology of the humerus bone in the previous video we learned about the bony features of the scapula and the clavicle bone your collar bone or the beauty bone in this video we are going to focus on the humerus bone now this is the longest bone of your upper limb and it articulate proximally with the glenoid cavity of the scapula bone to make the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint and distally it will articulate with the radius and the ulna bone to make the elbow joint now we study the osteology of the humerus bone in three regions the proximal region the body or the shaft and the distal region the proximal region consists of the head the anatomical neck and the tubercle have a look this is the anterior side of the proximal region the posterior side and the lateral side of the proximal region now how will you distinguish between the anterior and the posterior side you can do that by looking at the tubercle if you have the lesser tubercle on the front side you're looking at the anterior side of the the proximal region now if you have the greater tubercle on the front side you're looking at the posterior side of the humerus bone now the head is not a complete sphere it is one by third of the sphere and this head will articulate with the glenoid cavity of the scapula bone to make the shoulder joint below the head we have the anatomical neck and below the neck we have the surgical neck now this is really really important because the surgical neck is related with the axillary nerve and if you have the fracture of the surgical neck the axillary nerve will get damaged now have a look at the posterior view of the uh, proximal region this is the anterior side and if you turn it like this and look from the back side you will look at the posterior view the posterior view have the greater tubercle tubercle are the attachment side of the muscle these are rounded elevation now if we look at the lateral side that is if we turn the posterior side like this we have a groove in the center which is known as the intertubercular groove because it is between the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle this groove will contain the tendons of the biceps brachii muscle now we're done with the proximal extremity have a look at the body or the shaft of the humerus bone this is the lateral view and this is the posterior view of the body the lateral side have the deltoid tuberosity it is the attachment side of your deltoid muscle the posterior side have a groove for the radial nerve so this groove is known as the radial groove now we are left with the distal extremity of the humerus bone this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side the anterior side has a fossa in the center which is known as the coronite fossa this fossa will contain the coronite process of the ulna bone during your flexion of the elbow joint now below the coronite fossa we have the trochlea which will articulate with the trochlear notch of the ulna bone now on the lateral side of the trochlea you have spherical structure which is known as capitulum this will articulate with the radius bone above the capitulum you have another fossa which is known as the radial fossa this fossa will contain the head of the radius bone during flexion now we have two epicondyles the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle the medial and the lateral epicondyle are small roughened elevations due to the attachment of the muscles the lateral epicondyle inflammation is very common in tennis players and the inflammation of the lateral epicondyle is known as the tennis elbow now have a look at the posterior side 
of the distal extremity. We have another fossa in the center of the posterior side of the distal extremity, which is known as the olecranon fossa. This fossa will contain the olecranon process of the ulna bone. During your extension of the elbow joint, this fossa will be filled with the olecranon process of the ulna. Have a look. If we have the posterior side of the distal extremity, this is the olecranon fossa which is filled with the olecranon process of the ulna bone during the extension of the elbow joint. Now, the medial epicondyle dial is really important because the ulna nerve is passing over it. And during, you know, the tingling sensation of your medial hand or the fifth digit, the ulnar nerve is in contact with the medial epicondyle. This is all about the osteology. In the next video, we are going to learn about the bony features of the radius and the ulna. Please do like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.